In lesson 13, we're going to look at how parabolas and circles interact with lines. So on page 97, you'll see these four pictures. Go ahead and take a look at them and decide which one doesn't belong, jotting down a reason why you chose that it didn't belong. So like with all of these, um, there's answers that can be justifiable for every single diagram. So maybe in diagram A, you chose, um, you chose it because it's the only one with a vertical line. Maybe you chose B because it's the only one that um, intersects the other graph once. So it intersects this um, circle here once and no other pictures have that. Maybe um, for part C, you said it's the only one that had a parabola. Or maybe you chose D because it's the only one where the two equations or the two graphs didn't cross each other at all. All right, then on page 98, let's go ahead. Um, it's gonna, you're gonna graph this green equation, which is a circle. So we see that it's got a squared, two squared parts. Um, so equation of a circle. So find the center and the radius, graph it. Then you're gonna graph the line y equals six. See if you can figure out where they cross at. So it's gonna look like they cross somewhere. Can you verify or show that they do cross there? And then graph the line um, y equals x minus two and determine um, where that crosses the circle and where they intersect. So try that and then come back to the video and I'll talk you through it. All right, so we could graph this circle by finding the center. So the center, the x value of the center is 3, the y value is 2, um, and then r squared is 25, so the radius is 5. So we could go ahead and plot the point 3, 2, and then do a radius of 5, and we would get this circle. The line y equals six is gonna be a horizontal line that goes through a y value of six. Okay, so we could graph that. And then where does it look like these two graphs are intersecting? Okay, so it looks like they're crossing here and here. So this ordered pair is the point zero six is what it looks like. And this one is the point six six. So can we verify um, or prove that it actually does cross at that at those two points? So in order for that to happen, this point would have to be on both the blue line and the green circle. So we do know that it is on the blue line because the y value is six. So this equation is just all y values that are six. So if the y value is six, it's on this line. So it's certainly on the blue line. So then we have to determine or prove or verify that it's on the circle. So there's a couple, I mean, there's multiple ways you can do this. Um, one way would be to prove that the distance from the point zero six to the center is five, since the radius of this circle is five. Um, so you could just draw in a little right triangle there and you could count the sides. So this is three and this is four. And then you could do the Pythagorean theorem here. Okay, so we could go four squared plus three squared. So that's 16 plus nine, which is 25, which is our C squared. So our C would be five. And so that certainly means that that is on this circle since it's five um, units away from the center. So you could do that again for this one and end up seeing that you have another right triangle with legs of three and four, which is going to guarantee that you have a hypotenuse of five. Um, so that would verify that again. Okay, so that's one way. Um, another way would be to plug these points into the equation for the circle. 
And so in place of X, put the X coordinate and in place of Y, put the Y coordinate and um, verify that that equals 25. So for this first point, um, the X coordinate is zero. So we would put zero in and the Y coordinate is six. So zero minus three is negative three. Negative three squared is nine. Six minus two is four. Four squared is 16. That does equal 25. So that one does work. Verified in the equation. Um, and then you could do it again with the point six, six. So instead of a zero here, we would have a six. So six minus three is three. Three squared is nine. Six minus two is still four. Four squared is still 16. And so we would get 25 again. So then that's verified as being on the circle. So you can plug a point into the equation to verify that it's on the circle. Could use some other strategies, like I said, drawing that triangle. Um, so then if we graph the line y equals x minus 2, okay, we could do that. And then where does this appear to intersect on our picture? So let me get rid of these um, triangles here so we don't have as much stuff to look at. All right, so where does this where does this line intersect? And now this line is actually intersecting. It looks like it's inter obviously intersecting the circle and um, potentially the the line y equals six. So let's take a look at where we think this is happening. So this one looks like it's happening at the point zero two. Well, zero negative two actually. Um, this point right here looks like the point seven five maybe and then this one looks like the point eight six so um we need to verify that it's on each of these equations okay so let's verify um this first one on the line in the circle so the line equation is y equals x minus two so the y coordinate is negative two, the x is zero. So does negative two equal negative two? It does. So this point is for sure on the orange line. Then we would need to plug it into the circle equation. So the circle equation was x minus three, the x coordinate is zero, minus three squared. Then the y coordinate, which is negative two minus two squared and see if that equals 25. So this would be negative three squared, which is nine, negative four squared, which is 16, which does equal 25. So this point is on both, um, both equations. So that's definitely the intersection point. So then we could do this again for these other points. Um, so again, this 7, 5 is on the orange line, which is the Y coordinate equal to the X coordinate minus 2. Okay, so 5 equals 5. This one is definitely on the orange line. Then we could plug it into the circle equation. So we would take the X coordinate, which is 7 minus 3 squared y coordinate which is 5 minus 2 squared see if that's 25 so 7 minus 3 is 4 squared is 16 5 minus 2 is 3 squared is 9 that does equal 25 so this point has been verified on both the green circle and the orange line so then we just have the point 8 6 left and see if that's on the line, on both of these lines. Um, so the orange line says that y is equal to x minus 2. So 6 is equal to 6. That is true. And then the blue line is just y equals 6. And we can see that the y does equal 6. So that is on both lines. So plugging in to each equation just to be sure that it is on each of those lines. Maybe other strategies like I talked about with the um, triangle. 
All right, then in 13, 3 on page 99, let's write the equation of this circle first. So go ahead and do that. Then you're going to try and graph and write the equation of lines that are parallel to the x-axis and intersect the circle twice, perpendicular to the x-axis but does not intersect the circle, and then perpendicular to this line and intersects the circle at 6, 8. So remember, um, perpendicular slopes are opposite reciprocal slopes. So go ahead and try that, and then you can come back to the video and I'll talk you through it. All right, so let's write the equation of the circle. So remember, a circle equation is x minus the x of the center squared plus y minus the y of the center squared equals the radius squared. So let's go ahead and find the center point. So the center point is 0, 0. So this is just going to be x minus 0, y minus 0. Um, and then equals the radius squared. So the radius goes all the way out to 10, so 10 squared. So you could leave it like that. You could also write it as x. Let me write it not right there. Let me do this. Let me make this smaller. All right, so you could also have it just be x squared um, plus y squared equals 100 if you wanted. All right, then if we want to write an equation of a line parallel to the x-axis, so let's just look at the x-axis first, okay? So here's um, the x-axis. So if we want to write the equation of a line parallel to the x-axis, we just want to write, whoops, any of these lines, okay? And these are our y lines. So y equals negative 1, y equals negative 2, y equals negative 3, negative 8, y equals 3, y equals 6. Any of these are fine, okay? So I'm just going to leave it there. Um, and actually, I'm going to turn that blue. Okay, so that is the line. The one that I have right there is the line y equals 8. Okay, then we could write the equation of a line perpendicular to the x-axis. So perpendicular to a horizontal line is a vertical line. So we just have to write any vertical line. But now we do not want this one to intersect the circle. So this is intersecting the circle, so we can't do that. So it needs to be outside of the circle. So here or here or even off the grid, okay? So you just need to choose, and these are our x lines, so x equals negative 11, or x equals 10.2, or x equals 12. Okay, you just can't write them between negative 10 and 10. Okay, so this one would be fine. So x equals negative 11 for this one. You could even, like I said, you could do 10 point, negative 10.2 or 10.2. Um, and then this final one, um, part C wants us to write one perpendicular to this line. So here's the slope of this line. So the perpendicular slope, opposite reciprocal. So this is negative, so we're, our perpendicular slope is going to be positive. And then the flip, so 3 over 1 or just 3. And then we can plug that into point slope form. So y minus the y coordinate equals the slope times x minus the x coordinate. So just plug this slope in. Y minus the y coordinate, so y minus 8. And then x minus our x coordinate of 6. And then let's graph that one. So we want it to go through the point um, four, uh, 6, 8. Okay, so I want it to go through the point 6, 8. And then it would have a slope of 3. So um, down 3 over 1 down three over one, down three over one. So I'll just keep doing that slope. All 
All right, so then there would be those equations. Then it said, write the equation of any line perpendicular to the x-axis, okay, that doesn't, uh, oh, sorry, these are the ones we already did. So these ones we did. Um, so let me just get rid of this. All right, then for the last line that we graphed, um, find a second point where the line intersects the circle. Okay, so where else is it intersecting the circle? So it looks like it's intersecting down here at 0, negative 10. And so again, we just need to verify that. So would this intersect that circle at 0, negative 10? And I would say immediately yes, because this is 10 units from the center because it's just straight down 10 from the origin and the radius of this circle is 10. So yes, um, so zero, negative 10. And I guess we should probably check that that's actually on this point, right? Or on this um, equation here. So we should take and plug it in to make sure it goes into this one. So that's how we know it is on the circle. So then let's plug in negative 10, um, 0 into this. So negative 10 minus 8 is negative 18. And then 3 times negative 6 is also negative 18. So it is on the line and it's on the circle since it's 10 units away from the center. All right, so what does each equation represent on the graph? So um, this one is the circle because we see the x squared and the y squared. And then this one is the line since it's in slope intercept form. So what's special about the point 7, 5? So it appears like it's on both, okay? Appears to be on both graphs. So appears to be on, on both the circle and the line. So then what would be special about it in regard to the equations? So it would be a solution to both equations. So here on both graphs, or on both the circle and the line, so then if that's true, then it would be a solution in both equations. All right, lesson summary. So we can graph circles and lines on the same grid, and then we can kind of estimate where they're going to cross. And then we would verify that it's actually true that they cross there by plugging them into each equation. So substituting them into the equations. And if they um, create a true statement, both sides are equal, then they are on, um, that verifies that they are actually on the graph. So then this point, 22, negative 1, we can plug in and check, and 5, negative 18, we could have checked and verify that it's on both the circle and the line. All right, so the cool down, go ahead and try this. And if you are struggling, um, or have questions, be sure that you reach out to your teacher.